what side of the station did you see the plane fly over? Okay, actually from the front of the station. From the front of the Where did you see the plane coming from exactly? What direction? Did you see it approaching? Well, I saw it, like I said, from the If you look here where Arlington Cemetery is, uh -huh. right about where those transformers are, yeah. that's the first place I saw it. it cleared all these lampposts, it cleared all the light posts. So it was heading towards you coming from Arlington Cemetery over there? No, 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 no. no. It was heading from left to right. It came from the two area. So you're saying it was uh, it came from to the north side of the Navy annex even? Yes. If the Air Force Memorial had been built, the airplane would have ran into it. Mm, okay, yeah. It almost hit these roofs over here. Yeah. So we saw it fly. It was coming from coming from, from like this way. Mm -hmm. coming from there to mm -hmm. this way. Okay. And then at the time, feelings and it's like it almost hit my roof, that much roof. Okay. Let's see. Let's see where you say it was coming down. We're we're on the south side of the Sitco Station. Robert says he saw it come down over here on the north side. Is that right, Robert? That's correct. I thought he was gonna hit the floor, the street here, the ramp. But, uh, you know, so I ran out here. Number 1. The 9-11 Commission. The following is a time-lapse depiction of the flight path of American 77. south of the Navy Annex and south of the former Sitco. Number 2. The alleged black box data released from the National Transportation Safety Board in 2006. Scale animations created by FAA certified pilot and founder of Pilots for 9-11 Truth, Robert Balsamo, based off heading provided by the NTSB. The NTSB says it flew south of Columbia Pike, just south of the communications antenna on the Virginia Department of Transportation's property, south of the former Sitco gas station, and directly over the Route 27 overpass bridge to hit the light poles and enter the building entirely on the bottom floor. But don't forget, although the Southern Approach heading reported by the NTSB does match with what was reported by the 9-11 Commission, the final altitude reported was 699 feet above sea level, making the final descent and pull up to hit the light poles and be low in level as shown in the Department of Defense 2006 release security video, physically impossible. Number 3. The physical damage, starting with the down light poles, as depicted by defense contractor Integrated Consultants, and officially endorsed on the State Department website, usinfo.state.gov The plane has to fly directly over the bridge in this exact trajectory in order to hit the light poles. Light pole 1 on the south edge of the bridge allegedly speared the windshield of Lloyd England's taxi cab. Light pole 2 on the north edge of the bridge was hidden on a steep hill in the bushes completely unnoticeable to passing motorists. Light pole 3 was off to the side in the median of a cloverleaf exit ramp. Light pole 4 was concealed on a decline with a guardrail in front of it. Light pole 5 was also concealed on a decline. So the exact location of the light poles is only acknowledged by corporate proxy, as they have failed to address this in any official report. In fact, the Virginia Department of Transportation is in control of light pole maintenance, and when asked via Freedom of Information Act requests, they denied having any documentation as to the exact location of the poles that were allegedly downed on 9-11 and later replaced. The reason the exact location of the downed light poles and taxi cab is so important is because it establishes the required location and trajectory of the plane down to the foot. Even a minor deviation in approach would have left one or some of the light poles untouched and resulted in a different damage pattern.
Despite a clear effort by the officials to not report on the light poles and keep the specific details ambiguous, their exact location has been independently established by the photographic evidence, as just demonstrated by defense contractor integrated consultants and further demonstrated by this image taken before the attacks in May of 2000, showing pole numbers 1 and 2 intact on either side of the bridge. In this image from 9-11, both poles are downed. These two poles on the bridge in particular are the most important of the five because they were the furthest south, making it physically impossible for them to be downed by any type of aircraft at all approaching from the north side of the gas station, as reported by all the known witnesses in this critical area. Number 4. The Officially Commissioned Building Performance Report by the American Society of Civil Engineers. They published the following images depicting a southern approach angle of the plane. But the true purpose of this report was to document the damage to the building. They covered each and every damaged column and depicted the overall damage as being directional, exclusively requiring the depicted southern approach angle of the plane as referenced in all official data and reports and published in these images. Note the definitive trajectory of the damage to the building depicted. Starting with the anomalous alleged impact into the outer facade of the building's E-ring, ending with the curious, almost perfectly round alleged exit hole in the C-ring. The ASCE also established the required low and level impact into the bottom floor of the building. They reported on page 28, quote, the aircraft seems for the most part to have slipped between the first floor slab on grade and the second floor. Note how they depict more than half of the left engine burrowing into the foundation that photographic evidence shows was left undamaged. Yet they didn't depict or report any foundation damage. The required low and level first floor impact was also depicted in a project published by Purdue University. Note how they avoided the problem caused by the low hanging engines of the plane by simply not including them in the animation at all. The plane absolutely has to be south of the Navy Annex, south of the gas station, and directly over the Route 27 overpass bridge to hit the light poles and cause the low and level directional damage to the building as documented and reported. There is no room for error in the official flight path at all, so these critical details should have been easily confirmed by the witnesses. But as you are about to see for yourself, they independently and unanimously reported the opposite, proving the plane could not have caused the physical damage. Virtually all of the following first-hand witness accounts were video recorded on location, and they have been categorized into five separate and opposing vantage points. Many of these same witnesses were officially recorded by the Center for Military History or the Library of Congress only weeks after the event, placing the plane in the same location. This eliminates the notion that their accounts are inaccurate from faded memory due to the amount of time between the event and their recorded independent interviews a few years later. The independent interviews in this presentation have been edited for conciseness, but the complete interviews, as well as the transcripts and recordings of all referenced official interviews, are available to view for free at citizeninvestigationteam.com. They're perfect from what I saw. And we've never, yeah, we've for, the never record, for the record, we, we've never, never talked to each other about this at all. So you guys, neither of you guys have even really talked about this yeah, with never, each other. Never, never talked. Never, in all these five years, and you both independently drew the flight path line pretty much exact. I know, I was, I, I, the way that this has been going, 
you know, I was, who knew what he was going to put down there because he was in a different location than the over. But it's right there, which makes me feel good about the way I remembered it. So you're both pretty much 100% certain that that's, that's what you remember the flight path from? Different locations, yes. Now let me ask you this. This is going to sound kind of silly. What are the odds that both of you are mistaken as far as the fact that the plane was on this side of the station and that the plane actually came from the south side of the station? Uh, i tell you right now. <laughs> it, you can't say more than 100% because there's no way it was anywhere other than where I said it was. What about you? Again, something like that, something of, of that magnitude. So to reverse that question, what's the percentage chance that the plane was actually on the south side of the station? Uh, zero chance. Is there less than zero percent? <laughs>